Hi, it's Jan Beta, and this is the power supply from my Amiga 2000 that you saw me uh, working on in one of the last videos. Uh, this is incredibly loud. The fan in this has seen better days, and I guess um, there are much better fans made today than there were back in the day. Uh, yeah, I want to replace, at least replace the fan in this and uh, take a look at the insides on the way and maybe replace some capacitors. So this is what this is, uh, switching power supply obviously, PSM2000 which probably is uh, made for the Amiga 2000. Input, uh, yeah, it can take 240 or 120. Uh, output is plus 5, plus 12, minus 5 and minus 12. And there's another plus 5 and ground. Uh, and a clock pin. This is, uh, you can actually replace this with an old ATX power supply. The newer ATX power supplies don't have the minus 5 volts, which isn't really used all that much in the Amiga, but if you have Zorro cards inserted, some of them are using it. Um, at least the Amiga provides minus 5 volts, from what I know, to the, uh, to the Zorro ports or expansion slots. The uh, clock is not a problem. There is a jumper on the main board you can set uh, to not relying on this clock, but um, supplying an internal clock. So uh, that's fine. The yeah, it's a pretty pretty hefty. Uh, this goes up to twenty amps plus five, so it's a pretty hefty power supply. I'm not going to replace it just yet, but I'm going to try to replace the fan in it and uh, work from there. That's the first thing I want to do. So guess what? There's something rattling around in there, which of course with mains power devices always is a good sign. Not. Let's have a look. So I think yeah, there are screws on the side and I probably can pop the lid off. Okay, there we go. Well, uh, good thing I wanted to replace the fan because uh, look what happened. <laughs> the blade itself, no wonder this was loud as hell. The blades uh, are cracked and they came off. So uh, yeah, probably the this was just barely hanging on there and uh, the fan came off when I re removed this from the case or something. So, yeah, there definitely needs to be a new fan in there. <laughs> oh boy. Wow, and I just realized this fan is actually riveted in. They were pretty confident in this fan lasting forever, I guess. So they put rivets in there. Oh, this is going to get messy, I guess. So, you know what time it is. <clears throat> the last time I did this, I ended up having my own meme <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, so, I'm gonna be a bit careful with this stuff. But still, let's see. I'm taking a, like, a drill bit that's a bit smaller than the size of the rivets. Okay, that went surprisingly well, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
but that said, the drill bit I used this time was was a new one, so it was dull like the last one I used. So now what's left is to um, push these through there, I guess. There we are. There we go. That wasn't too bad. <coughs> so here's the original fan, innovative uh, DC brushless fan motor from 1988, which isn't innovative at all from today's perspective. Um, 12 volts, 0.16 amps. And there's two wires coming from it that are entangled uh, here somewhere. Somewhere down there. <laughs> I think I'm just going to clip these wires and attach the new fan to the wires. If it's going by any rules, should be red. Red should be positive and uh, blue should be negative. As a replacement for the original fan, I bought this Noctua NFA8 ULN 80mm premium fan, which should be if I'm not mistaken, a 12 volt fan, 80 millimeter is the size we need. And uh, yeah, this is a very low noise, very decent fan that comes with some nice uh, features like an extension cable and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. So that should fit in there nicely, and we're probably going to use these um, rubber uh, fasteners there, or something. Yeah, we're going to see about that. There are probably screws in there too. There, there are. So we're we're going to see how we how we get this fastened in there. But first of all, we need to get rid of the old fan. Fan. I've got a new one. Well, this clips on quite nicely. <laughs> yeah. This goes to the trash. Mm, our premium fan. Shouldn't say it that ironically. It's a really, it's a really good fan actually. <laughs> So this is like three connectors, obviously. This is the low noise adapter, <laughs> which presumably just has a resistor in it. So there are screws, actually. That's cool. So what we're going to do is to use the screws, probably, because um, otherwise we won't get this back on, I guess. It has some rubber inserts there anyway, so let's see if we can connect it electrically. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, do it the easy way and just cut off these wires and the red and the black one should be the ones we need. So red presumably is uh, positive and black negative. And we're going to connect it to the red and the blue one. It should be pretty trivial. I'm going to add some heat shrink tubing and solder these together, I guess. Let's go! And while I'm at it, uh, it's not very necessary in this case, but um, these large capacitors um, store like 200 volt DC voltage which you don't want to uh, be somewhere near your body. So be very careful with these um, switching power supplies because they have high voltage capacitors in there. That's why there's all these warning labels on there. These things might actually kill you if you touch the wrong end. So be very aware of that. Just stay away from the capacitors when you're working on these. Um, in this case, it's not much... Uh, there's not much danger in this, I guess, because um, we are only working on the 
upper side of the PCB. I'm just going to brush this off a bit so there's less dust. Nearly as good as new! So just some leftover heat shrink. I'm going to put that over there before I solder them together. So I can isolate them nicely afterwards. <laughs> Hopefully. Same with the contacts uh, from the fan. And then it's just a matter of soldering them together. That should do. Now for putting the fancy fan in. Uh, you always want to make sure that the label is on the outside here. I hope these screws fit. Yep. That should work. Nice. Okay, so the screws are kind of have like a self-tapping quality to them. All right, yeah, that's not going anywhere. Ah. Okay, got the new fan in. Let's see if it works. I guess. <laughs> okay, so I connected the um, Amiga two thousand back up. Uh, let's see. Yep. And it's spinning, and it's so much more silent. <laughs> ah, yeah, that was a good idea. And the drive is ticking, so I guess the Amiga 2000 still works. Of course, it will be a good idea to um, replace the capacitors in the power supply, because these switching power supplies age pretty badly. Um, the capacitors in there are usually put under a lot, lot of stress, like high frequency switching stuff and, and stuff like that. So these get pretty warm usually. Um, this fan will <laughs> provide much better cooling than the one that was in there before. The airflow is quite significant. Um, so this is going to be better for the power supply anyway. Uh, I should go in there and replace the capacitors with um, new ones at some point. For now, I'm pretty satisfied with this uh, fan and how quiet this whole machine became. And uh, probably how much more cooling this gets now, which is a good thing, of course. And indeed, the Amiga still works, uh, which is yeah. I didn't I didn't put all the screws in yet. Just um, testing this machine at this point, but it seems to fully work still. And yeah, so much for this video. This was about uh, replacing the fan in the original power supply. As I mentioned, there are ways to connect an old ATX power supply or even a modern ATX power supply to this that you find in, from various sources across the internet. I might end up doing that at some point, but for now I'm quite satisfied with um, the very quiet fan, especially compared to the old fan. Uh, these Noctua fans are not uh, the cheapest fans around, but in my opinion it's, it's very much worth it. I'm using these in my uh, main desktop PC as well, and uh, they are pretty good. There's other good brands too, so as long as you have a good brand fan, you're going to be fine. Uh, this particular one, I'm, yeah, this is pretty convenient to to build into these power supplies, I guess.
So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again sometime on this channel. Uh, if you like this, feel free to check out my other stuff. There's links in the description. If you want to support my channel, check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the corner and in the end screen. Check out my other videos. Uh, maybe subscribe to this channel if you like this kind of uh, retro computing content. Uh, yeah, so much for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Jan Peter. See you next time. Bye.